Okay, we're going to talk about fungal infections. Um, the fungi that infect, infect the skin uh, tend to live by eating the, uh, the keratinocytes. So this is a very superficial infection. It, it, it lives in basically the stratum corneum in the hair and in the nails. Uh, you've heard of fungal nails and uh, that could, sort of thing. And that's because these fungi really uh, feed on the, on the keratin. Um, there's a whole bunch of different names. Uh, mycosis, because myco means fungus. Uh, dermatophytosis uh, means, literally means skin fungus. Ringworm is a, uh, is a term that you'll hear most often for tinea corpus, um, but it's all basically uh, these, um, these um, same thing. Now we call the, lesion, the lesions of these fungal infections tinea, and tinea then followed by wherever we, fi we find it. You'll see that in a second. So the, the types of fungus that actually do this are called derm dermatophytes, and they live on skin cells. They trans transmit with the skin, and people are shedding dead skin all the time. That's what dandruff is. Uh, so you can transmit by touch, skin to skin, by touching shedded flakes. Animals can give it to humans, and humans can give it to animals. Um, so it can be on the surface. It can be on surfaces. It can be on floors and, and that kind of thing, on towels, on uh, hair brushes, on benches. We'll, we'll talk about in, in a second. Um, you don't get symptoms right away. It might be a couple of weeks before you get the symptoms, but you're communicable right from the first time, like as soon as you start with the infection, uh, even though you don't have symptoms. Very widespread. Uh, so a couple of different types of fungus are common. Uh, trichophyton, epidermophyton, microsporum. It, I don't, don't memorize these names, just be familiar with them. They basically are fungi uh, that, that are all uh, the matophytes. So uh, we're going to start out with tinea corpus. Corpus, uh, corpus means the body. Uh, it's where we get the word corpse. Uh, and so if the if it's on the body, it's that's what it is. This is the one that we normally call ringworm. Very common, very contagious. And what you get is are these red scaly patches on the trunk, uh, and on, usually on the trunk, but it can be on the ex ex extremities. It's itchy, so people scratch it, and the scratching can spread it to new areas uh, because these dead cells that uh, have the fungus on them will come off under your nails and that kind of thing. What happens is it spreads out from the center locus, and the skin behind heals, so it ends up having this red ring. Um, it looks like eczema. That's a, a classic case of it here. You can see that where the, um, where the fungus is active and the center part is actually kind of healed up a little bit. A lot of people get tinea capitis, which is head ringworm. Uh, it, it basically gives like a dandruff sort of thing, but it can lead to inflammation that that um, will kill hair follicles and lead to hair loss and, and baldness. It ends up looking like this, and so rather than a nice clean scalp, you can see the the inflammation and the uh, at the roots of the hairs, a little bald spot. 
very common thing is tinea pedis, which is athlete's foot. Uh, between any toes. Uh, I don't buy necessarily third and fourth digits. Uh, it gives a burning, itching feeling. It may actually crack and start to ooze. Um, um, most people get it, when they get it, it's between the toes and, and kind of at the base of the toes, but it can actually cover the whole bottom of the foot. Uh, it's called a moccasin distribution. Um, it can spread to your hands to other places. Um, classic look of, of it, and this is the moccasin distribution. Um, now, there are some, some fundamental things to, to note about this. It, it, it will spread onto locker room floors and showers and that kind of thing. Uh, I particularly worry about people putting their feet up on benches and then uh, and shedding onto the bench and then having somebody else maybe sit on that bench, maybe without a towel. And it can, it can lead to jaw catch because it's the same basic fungus. A lot of times uh, it's very difficult to eradicate because people just keep on reinfecting themselves. What will happen is you'll have an athlete's foot and then the fungus or the fungal spores will end up in, in your socks and maybe you won't wear that pair of socks for a couple of weeks. You get the athlete's foot cleared up using topical creams and antifungal medications, and then you put those socks back on, and you will reinfect yourself. Um, it, it happens time and time again. You really should just throw away the socks, or you boil them. Uh, just normal washing machine temperatures aren't effective uh, to get rid of it. So. Um, it, it it's very irritating. It's itchy and it's uh, and it can be very nasty. Jock itch is basically the uh, the same thing anywhere in upper thighs and the buttocks, uh, the whole that whole area. Um, it can happen in the beard, which is called tinea barbae or uh, or any place else. So th this is classic jock itch. Uh, it does not look pleasant. So what do you do? You, you use topical fungicides. That's the, you know, most of them are bought over the counter. Um, and it can be stubborn because you just keep on reinforcing infecting yourself. So really you have to treat your socks and your shoes, uh, gloves if that's the case, if it's jock itch, underwear, if it's uh, tinea corpus, shirts and whatever. Like whatever clothing has been over the top of the lesion really should be treated as well uh, or disposed of. Now if it gets under nails or in nails, fungal nails and that, they can be very difficult uh, to treat because the, the creams don't make it through the, through the nails. Um, they give people uh, an oral medication. It's called uh, gre Griesofluvin. Uh, it, I don't know a lot about it. I was prescribed it once, um, and my MD kind of scared the crap out of me with it. He said that uh, before I start, before anybody starts taking it, you have to have liver function tests to find out what a baseline is of your liver function, and then you have to get liver function tests as you're taking this this medication because one of the side effects can be severe liver damage, permanent liver damage. Uh, 
I ended up deciding to just try uh, topical things, fungicides, to get rid of the uh, the heifer's foot uh, and the, the fungal nail. Um, there are other side effects, headache, GI upset, fatigue, insomnia, photosensitivity, a lot of things. It's, it's a pretty potent medication uh, and it's usually used for, uh, for severe kind of systemic fungal infections or yeast infections, but they use it for the stubborn ones, for the under the nails and that kind of thing. So again, you want to prevent rather than, than treat. Uh, it's one of the reasons why you wear flip-flops in the shower and in locker rooms, that kind of thing. Um, if you see the lesions on the client, don't touch them because it's contagious. Uh, it's, um, it seems to be, um, because we're all exposed to it all the time, it seems that stress and uh, immunosuppression and fatigue and those sorts of things make you more susceptible. Um, so be careful um, around it. It's locally contraindicated. Uh, you know, athlete's foot. Uh, I don't know if spreading one foot to the other with massage, I guess, is quite possible uh, if you're doing foot massages. Be aware of what the lesions look like and avoid them.